All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Melissa Birch. I'm with the Clean Energy Resource Teams and we are excited to have you here for our Community Energy Ambassador Q&A. Um, I see a bunch of folks introducing themselves in the chat. Please feel free to continue to do that. Um, as I said, I'm Melissa. I'm joined today by Keely and Shailen, who are uh, my colleagues at CERTS. Uh, next slide, please. We, uh, I, I want to share a little bit about CERTS. So CERTS is a statewide partnership, and we have a shared mission to connect individuals and communities to the resources they need to identify and implement community-based clean energy projects. And so when we talk about clean energy projects, we're typically talking about things like energy efficiency, uh, renewable energy, and um, beneficial electrification, like electric vehicles and heat pumps uh, and so forth. And um, next slide, please. As I mentioned, we're a statewide partnership, and that partnership includes four organizations we have the uh, Minnesota Department of Commerce, Division of Energy Resources, uh, the Great Plains Institute, um, which is a nonprofit that works on energy, and Keeley is um, associated with the Great Plains Institute. We have the University of Minnesota Extensions Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships, which is where Shailen and I and a number of others are based as well as the Southwest Regional Development Commission, where we have some staff as well. Um, each, each of these organizations really brings uh, different perspectives, different resources, different types of information uh, to the CERTS partnership. Um, and so each, create, each helps co-create co um, the CERTS uh, work and CERTS um, Organization. Well, we're partnership, not organization. Uh, next slide, please. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we work across Minnesota. Uh, we have seven regions around the state and staff in each of those regions. We provide some limited financial assistance through our seed grants. And then a lot of our work is really offering technical assistance community engagement, um, learning opportunities for folks. And the ambassadors program is really um, a part of that um, a part of that work. And the idea is really to find ways to help communities do clean energy projects that are community determined, that are valued by uh, folks in the community and benefits them. Next slide, please. Uh, we do have staff across the state, so depending on where you're joining from, you may recognize some of these folks. Um, we have Anna in Northwest, we have Heidi in Central, Imani in West Central, Nadia in Southwest, Nick in Northeast, Diana in Metro, and Jennifer in Southeast. So, you know, if you're not sure who to reach out to at CERTS and and want to get in touch with uh, someone, feel free to reach out to your regional coordinator. They're a great resource for you in your region. Next slide, please. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Keely. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you all um, for being here today. Uh, my name is Keely. I'm a program associate with CERTS. Um, I'm going to dive into our community energy ambassador program and our self-directed training checklist. Um, but I'll give you a little background on the program here. So this is kind of our homepage of the ambassador program. And a couple of things I'll point out if you want to follow along, there's a QR code and that'll take you to this page. Um, but we have this little section where you can um, pinpoint various spots on this web page and directly go to them without having to scroll through the whole page. And I'll kind of do those little steps with you and explain some of these things. We also have our introduction to the Community Energy Ambassador Program. So I'll give you a background of where we started and why we started this program and what we hope to get out of it. 
Um, so the first thing here is this ambassador map, one of my favorite things about the website. Well, top, well, top one. Um, so this is huge. This is showing you where we have ambassadors in the state of Minnesota. And these are by um, county. Um, so the blue are where we have ambassadors and the yellow is where we do not. So if you know anyone in, in the yellow counties, um, let, them, let them know about this program and get them signed up. We'd love to have everyone in a, um, someone in every county um, by 2025. So um, that's really exciting. And then there's a little link to the map if you want to check that out. Okay, so the Community Energy Ambassador Program has to um, pass right now. The cohort is in pilot mode. Um, we're actually week two into our cohort program um, with four community-based organizations that do work around Minnesota. Um, more information will come out about that as they get um, in, onboarded with the program. And then the one we're talking about today is our self-directed training path. Um, and we wanted to make a training checklist for you all so you kind of can follow a path and know um, the steps to take to become a certified community energy ambassador. And we also have some additional um, engagement resources for you all to use. So we have a little flyer to talk about some of the rebates and tax um, credits and then some more specific topics. And that's all on our page. Um, we also have a link if you want to um, dive more into those. And then we have our networking events and there's um, some coming soon. So keep an eye on our page. Um, if some happened in your region um, in the last year, we do have some recaps of those events. So check them out and learn about the things that we talked about in those events and people that attended and, and so forth. And then we also have our CERTS um, events calendar that um, stays pretty up to date. So you can always check that out. And then we have our um, ambassador updates and stories. So this is where you can sign up for our community energy ambassador newsletter. You can sign up today if you want. Um, and then there's some stories about ambassadors that are currently doing work around Minnesota. Um, and you can read up on those. And then we're also open to questions and feedback about the program. Um, so there's a link here. And then I'll show you another spot where you can reach us um, to give us questions or feedback about the program. So I'm going to move into our self-directed training checklist, which is what we're here today to talk about. Um, so this is a little roadmap that I created to kind of give you an idea of kind of the steps to become an ambassador and then what happens afterwards. And I'll go through these steps a little bit here. And then the main thing I want to focus on is like once you become a community energy ambassador, we hope that you can kind of continue this process of community engagement, working on projects and tracking those projects um, so we can see what all the um, hard work that's going on in Minnesota around clean energy. So these are screenshots um, of the web page, but feel free to follow along with that QR code there. Um, this is another little roadmap just to give you an overview of kind of um, the steps you'll take to become a certified ambassador. And this is the main page. So just kind of welcoming you to the program. So step one, we really want you to get to know the Community Energy Ambassador Program. So it, again, this is that introduction um, to the Community Energy Ambassador Program video and you can take a look at it and get a nice get a sense of why we created this and what we wanted to accomplish with the program across Minnesota. Um, and what's nice about this web page is there is this section where you can jump to the various areas. You can jump to the pre-training assistance we'll talk about, the survey, the project proposal, and um, the project report. So if you're already on the path to become an ambassador, you don't have to go through, scroll through the whole page to reach those spots. And again, we have the, our um, contact here. So if you have any questions or feedback about the program, um, your email is always on there for you to access. And then step two is taking this um, pre-training assessment. So this will give us a sense of where you're starting and how comfortable you feel about talking about clean energy projects to your community and um, how you feel confident in talking to whether it's an individual, a business, a local government or a nonprofit organization. And this is the pre-training assessment. And then once you become an ambassador and do your project, there'll be a post-training assessment and I'll show you that as well. Um, and there, I love this question of like, what are some ideas um, of how to engage your community around clean energy and um, how you might you make it happen. I think this is really important, kind of giving getting a sense of what kind of project do you want to do to become an ambassador, but also for us to know what kind of projects are out 
um, in Minnesota and things you want to engage with your community on. And feel free to take this assessment now and um, get started on that. Um, so step three, I broke it up into two parts here because it is kind of a bigger section. This is where we have our webinars and pre-training. So in each section, we have a video for you to watch. So similar to this one, it was a, a live webinar. And then we have some, we have the slides that if you want to review them and refer to any information on them, you can access those right there. And then once you watch um, those videos and webinars, uh, you would want to take a post-training survey. And so these are questions about the um, about the webinar and just to track where you are on your progress to become an ambassador. And we'll see those. And then maybe if you took one webinar um, or two, and we can just reach out to you to see if you have any questions about those webinars or how can we further um, engage you to become an ambassador and things like that. And then there's also these additional resources. So these um, pings at the bottom of the survey, that'll take you to a web page on our website with additional resources around those topics. Um, so you can get more information on our website for that. And then part two is very similar. Um, we did make these, here, hold back one second. We did make these in order of what we thought was important. However, you can do this in any um, way you want. Like if you prefer to start with EV 101, because that's a topic you're more interested in, feel free to do that. But if you just kind of want a step to step, um, we did put that in, in kind of order here of importance. And then um, this looks very similar. Again, we like to make sure we're tracking our progress to see where you're at and what videos you've watched and what questions you have and how we can um, work with you on continuing the process of becoming an ambassador. So step four is one of my favorites. Um, this is the project section. We did create a little worksheet for you all to kind of go through questions like, what is the topic? What are your audiences? What is the strategy? What skills do you bring? What partners can you um, bring into this? And then what sport can we assist with um, on this project as well? And so this kind of section is where you wanna think about some projects you wanna do in your community. And this doesn't have to be something massive where you have to get funding and build solar or whatever. It can be something as small as you know writing an article, um, presenting about the topic, a clean energy topic in your community or like at your church or like hosting a discussion with um, like a neighbor or something. And we do want to note too that CERTS is a nonpartisan partnership and does not do policy or advocacy work. So as a community energy ambassador, um, your focus is on the implementation of a clean energy idea and project. Um, so step five is uh, letting us know what this project proposal is. So there'll be questions about, you know, what type of project is this? Um, can you describe it? Um, who do you want to reach? And if you don't have an idea, that's okay. You can fill this out and one of us will reach out to you and see if we can help you think about a project or think of ways to um, work on something in your community. And then there's step six, and there's two parts to this because um, the second part will be kind of your post training survey. And so this project report um, will give us an idea of you uh, when you complete your project, what it was, if there's any um, energy ins installations or upgrades, um, so we can track some of those metrics, who you reached, what you learned from it, and maybe how it sparked to do further um, projects. And then part two or page two of this one is your post-training ass assessment. So this looks a lot like your pre-training assessment. We just wanna get a sense of if um, you feel more confident like talking about these uh, clean energy topics and talking to these um, various community areas of individual businesses, local governments or nonprofits. Um, and then we also have these awesome bonus opportunities. So we have a video on wind energy, if you're curious about that. And then we have those engagement resources that I mentioned that's on the main um, ambassador page and then those networking events that'll come about in, in various regions of Minnesota. And then once you become a certified Community Energy Ambassador, um, we really would want you to continue to learn, connect with ambassadors, and get projects done. Um, so we have this, and also remember you're not alone. So feel free to reach out at any time um, for assistance with us. And then um, track your projects. So we have this reporting tool. 
I'll show you here. Um, and you don't have to be a certified energy ambassador to fill out this reporting tool if you're like, oh, I don't want to do all the steps, but I still want to report my projects. So um, we're aware of what's going on in Minnesota. Um, and so this is what that looks like. And you can mark like if you are a certified ambassador, just make sure you check that so we know what kind of work we're doing. And then um and just give us an idea of what kind of projects you, you worked on. And then at the bottom of our page, we have our newsletter, which I had mentioned before. Um, you can also sign up today, but there's also um, the last few ambassador newsletters if you wanna check them out. Um, like the last one we sent was, uh, this training checklist is live. Um, super exciting and things that we'll want you to um, stay up on as ambassadors, or if you just wanna know about what's going on in the clean energy space, it's a good one to follow. Um, again, open to questions and feedback about this program. Um, so our contacts at the bottom, and then if anything, any big trainings are come up, there'll be links throughout. Okay, so since this is a QA, and a I wanna open up for some questions, but I want it to be a little structured so we have time to get through some of these. Um, so I'll open it up for the ambassador program as a whole, and then self-directed training checklist, and then any other questions if there's time. Um, so if anyone has any questions about the ambassador program as a whole, we'd love to love to hear them. And feel free to come off mute or um, put them in the chat. And I, I sh we have Shaylin watching the chat right now. So. Do you all feel like you have a pretty good understanding of um, what the ambassador program is and, and why we're doing this? Um, feel free to ask any of those questions too. I can, there's a quick question in the chat. How many ambassadors are there currently? Um, so we have <laughs> kind of a vague guess based on what we've been tracking. We have 1,081 people from Minnesota who self-selected and signed up to become ambassadors. And so that was since May of um, 2023, I wanna say. So it's good. We have almost every county in Minnesota covered as you can see from that map too, so. Um, Mary asked, do you send guest speakers to community events to explain the program and recruit folks? Um, I can, do, Keely, do you want to, do you want to, should I ask the questions and, and you and Melissa can take team answering them? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can say a little bit. I know we want to do the networking events and once someone becomes a certified ambassador, and they feel comfortable talking to their community, we, we can work with them about doing a presentation in the community. But yeah, I don't think that's off the table. If anyone, Melissa or Shailen, have anything to add? Yeah, I think that that pretty well summarizes it. Um, we do, we certainly do, um, we certainly have staff who are talking to folks, but we also would love to have ambassadors being ambassadors to their communities. Barbara asks, how much science do I need to know to be an effective ambassador? Or do you think the training will give me a sufficient background? Um, I think it'll be a good baseline. I think if there's a topic that you are really interested in, or if someone reaches out to you about a topic and you wanna dive more into that, um, you can use our resources on our webpage or reach out to us if you have further questions um, or further questions come up. Like if you do a presentation and someone's asking about um, solar and you're not quite sure about a, a question, you can say, let me check in with certs and see if I can get a, a good answer for you or something like that. Um, anything you want to add, Sheila or Melissa? Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, Paul asks a great question. Can you give examples of projects done previously or that you think um, you would think ambassadors would do? And what I did, I popped a link um, in the reply in the chat to the worksheet that Keely had mentioned previously 
Um, we have so many ideas for things that you could pursue. And instead of clogging up the website with it, we put them in the project worksheet um, if you'd like to download that and and use that to kind of like ex uh, fill out your ideas and, and work through some stuff. But um, a couple of things like Keely had mentioned, you know, you, it could be as simple as like writing an article to like a neighborhood association or even for certs to use um, about a clean energy idea or um information about clean energy. It can be talking to a friend or family member. Like it can be really, really basic stuff. If you want to do um, more ambitious things like create a handout, or we had one group who was doing puppet shows to children's groups to help explain different like clean energy topics and ideas, which I would love to see if anybody wants to do a puppet show or a performance. Um, so you can be as creative or as as simple as you'd like to be in in what you pursue. We really hope that that you lean on the skills and the talents and the experiences that you have so that it's something you're comfortable with and it's not it shouldn't be something that takes a ton of time. So Keely and Melissa do do you want to expand on any of those things? Um, no, I think you said it great. I think that um, we do have a lot of great ideas on that worksheet. Um, we're also open if like there's something on there that you're like, I don't know if I want to do any of these, like do that um, project proposal and we could always reach out and um, work with you on a project, um, but they can be um, what you what you want them to be. Dave, Dave Reichert here, can I ask a question? Yeah, hi. Of course. Um, good presentation. Um, I'm curious about the, you mentioned how advocacy is not part of the role of an ambassador, although you are advocating for <laughs> um, clean energy, right? Um, but I, what one of the things I'm very interested in right now is the um, next steps in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act funding. Uh, the rebates that are being um, developed by the Department of Commerce and Energy Division right now. Would um, supporting that and making the community know about that be considered advocacy that's off limits to an ambassador? No, on, on that sort of thing where it's it's already um, a program that is, that is being implemented um, or in the process of being developed to be implemented, um, that is definitely squarely in in the space that that we work in that that ambassadors work in. It, it's more things like um, advocating um, for particular policy changes or particular candidates, um, mm -hmm. that kind of political activity rather than the implementation. And you know, folks are certainly welcome to do that, but we just ask that you don't do it with an ambassador or certs hat on, you mm -hmm. know, figuratively or, or literally. Mm -hmm. So has certs been out um, telling people about the IRA tax credits? Is that part of the uh, education that certs provides? Absolutely. Yeah? I see people not. And when, yeah. it, and when it comes to the rebates, those will be aimed at lower income people and the the folks who have attended the advisory calls are are urging the state to um, be very organized in how they approach it by engaging with nonprofits. Um, will certs play any role in that? No, guess not. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we we uh, actually um, because it is um, a program that's going to be available. That is that is work that we that we do. I mean, we're really about making sure that folks are avail are aware of the opportunities so that they can decide whether or not they want to take advantage of those particular opportunities. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Very much. One thing too, to share with you, Dave. Um, so where this program really started was with the passing of the IRA and the Inflation Reduction Act. And so we have always been um, a grassroots outreach type of a group. 
that um, we don't go out and preach to communities. We try to see what communities need to solve their problems and try to connect them with resources that will do that. And so um, the Inflation Reduction Act offers lots of opportunities for communities to solve different types of problems that have to do with clean energy solutions. And, and so certs, you know, we created all these web tools to help people understand it. And then the ambassadors became kind of an arm of that, where it's like, we can reach so many more people and help so many more people understand these opportunities. If we have people within the community who are trusted messengers already to like share and explain and educate. Um, and another thing too, just to clarify with everybody, when we say clean energy, we mean energy efficiency, energy conservation and renewable energy. And so there's lots of different options in there for, for communities. It's not just about renewables and, um, and that type of thing that might take more convincing from communities. It's really, we just released a newsletter this morning with new tools that ambassadors can definitely use um, to help um, homeowners and renters and manufactured home residents um, just save money at home, just like simple tips and stuff. So that's kind of, that's kind of what we do and how, how we try to help ambassadors have resources to, to support that as well. Um, we've got a couple more questions in the chat. Um, let's see here. Nikolai asked, if CERTS has a project they're working on in a particular area, would they recruit ambassadors in the area to do engagement for it? Melissa, you want to punt that one to you? Yeah, I think um, we do share out um, a lot of the work that we do and would love to have ambassadors involved um, in, in work in their areas. Absolutely. And Vicki asked, is there access to measurement data? For example, if we wanted to track a home energy audit completion in Kenny neighborhood, a Minneapolis neighborhood, is that data available to us? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, that might be something that we would have to ask the auditor in those areas if they allow that data to go out. Um, and that maybe could be something we work with you on if that's a project you'd like to track. Yeah, I, and I I think I would add that it would it would also depend on you know consent from homeowners who are getting those audits or businesses who are getting those audits to have that information shared. That's mm -hmm. a that that's a key piece as well. Nothing else in the chat if anyone wants to ask wow. off mute. We can move to um, the self-directed training checklist too if you have any questions about that. Um, part can of I ask a follow-up question real quick actually? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still a little confused on like whether the um, I, I asked my question because I'm not sure if like the impetus for the projects that um, the ambassadors are doing, like, does that sort of come from the ambassadors themselves or does it come from certs? Like, do, do ambassadors, um, like, is the purpose of the program if an ambassador has like, like sees a need in their community or has a particular project that they want to work on, like it gives them the resources to do that or is it the um the ambassador program like gives certs more engagement capacity so that if they have like a project they want to work on they can go to the ambassadors to do engagement for it um is that clear yeah yeah I i'll can... say a little... oh sorry oh go ahead Jalen. no you can go ahead um, it's both and. And so the the checklist and the project that we outline within the checklist is just to kind of get you started. It's kind of to give you an example of the project would be, you know, to dip your toe in the waters of being an ambassador. So it's just kind of like a little 
like low key um, um, project that you can explore. And then once you become certified, that's kind of like we know that you have the basic understanding of all of these topics that we cover in our work, in the work that we do. And that you're somebody that if you're, you know, you can, you have a direct connection with us now. It's, um, we understand what you're working on, where you live, what community you're a part of, how we can like supply you with resources and tools that you may need to like work within your community or take on other, other projects. And it, this is a volunteer program. And so it's really about, um, supporting community members with information so that that you can go out and meet the needs within your community um and it would be great if you know you sign up for our newsletter like the ambassador specific one where we'll be sharing opportunities if you if you need a little bit more direction um if there's like you know when we do seed grants every other year those are for community led projects. And so if you can be out listening for potential seed grant projects or, you know, talking with people about what seed grants are and just kind of be like another arm of the the broader search group um, that understands what's happening and knows how to connect people to, to good resources. That's my rambly, rambly um, explanation. But Keely and Melissa, feel free to, to stop me. That was uh, exactly what I was going to say, Shannon, <laughs> word for word. No. Um, yeah, I think it could be both. I know, um, like Shaylin said, we want to want ambassadors to do projects that their community are, um, are looking to do. Um, so like, what are you hearing from your community? And if you're kind of doing those steps in those webinars and kind of how we have them set up, the first one is community engagement, because we think that's the most important, like how do you engage your community and see what types of projects they want to do. Um, but yeah, again, we'll have like those seed grants that'll go out or, I mean, we currently have some seed grants wrapping up. So like, what do those projects look like? How can I be involved in my community? And then like those um, uh, networking events and stuff too, like getting to know other ambassadors in your area, um, kind of attend those and see what's out there and what people are doing in different counties. Um, but again, yeah, I think it's both, like both can happen. Does that help, Nicola? Yep, that's very helpful, thank you. So I had a question about the seed grants. Um, when I was reading on the website, it looks like that's a reimbursement type grant where, you know, a, a person or an organization pays for something and then gets reimbursed. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Typically, yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the there reason are... I'm asking is a lot of, a lot of places, the reason that they're um, not able to take advantage of a lot of these programs is because it is a reimbursement-based system. Um, small rural communities don't have the funding available to do the community engagement that's required to get um, a large buy-in in a community, um, having to come up with the money and do the project first and then get reimbursed for it later just isn't an option for them. Um, I've noticed almost all the state grants are exactly the same way. Um, so I'm just wondering what other type of funding opportunities are there for us ambassadors to be able to get started? Yeah, I think I, I would add that um, in certain cases, if it, when applications are submitted for seed grants, we are sometimes able to provide a portion of the funding upfront and then the rest is on a reimbursement basis. Um, but it's something that, that we, get um consent from our funders to do um so it's so there's a, there's a little bit of an extra step in there but at times that can be possible with seed grants and i um, or, someone else mentioned oh sorry i just want to add one more thing christina 
Um, once you go through like the ambassador process and also like any time a community has like a need for something, CERTS has staff across the state particularly so that you can easily reach out to any staff member and talk through your project idea, whether you're an ambassador or, or not. And we can try to connect you to resources and funding options. Seed grants is just like one of the, the things that we do and it's the only funding thing that we do. Um, we also wanna make it really clear that just because you're an ambassador does not mean that like you have a leg up on getting a seed grant. Um, our steering committee members decide who receives the seed grants. Um, and so just to clarify that it's like two different projects, but it's something that we would love, we always love more outreach help on seed grants. And one of the other um, participants mentioned the IRA projects that are going on. Um, I just noticed uh, within the last few weeks that the state put out an RFP for a third party to administer these. Um, so it's my understanding that now they have to go through the whole RFP process and get someone to administer before we're gonna find out um, what needs to happen for those rebates. Have you heard any more on that? That's really the extent of, of what we know as well on that. Um, it, it, the RFP is out there um, and uh, so we'll, We'll see. Unfortunately, we would love to. We would love to be able to see further forward, but um, no crystal ball. <laughs> well, I guess what concerns me is there's a limited time frame and there's a limited amount of money. So now this third party vendor is going to take some of it right off of the top, which is going to reduce the rebate pool that's available to our communities. Um, plus, it's going to push the process back probably another six months. Um, but I guess we'll just have to stay tuned. I highly recommend, um, if you can join one of the community college's like webinars through commerce where they explain what's happening. I'm pretty sure this part of the process has always been their plan as they've been laying out like the steps to get to distributing rebates. And I don't know for sure, but I am pretty sure that whoever is going for the RFP, that's part of the funding that's not being distributed. Like, I think there's different buckets that the federal government has, like, carved out for these things. So this wouldn't, this RFP wouldn't impact the overall amount of funding that's available for, for community. So that makes sense. And, and we I, do typically try to share the, those, um, public um, uh, commerce, commerce is public um, meetings and so forth, information sessions and such. So definitely um, take a look at those and, and they, they, they provide updates uh, as they are able to. Thank you. Does anyone have any more questions about the checklist and like the process itself? We really want to make sure that it's clear and there aren't, um, there isn't anything that's gonna get in your way if you do wanna get from step one to step six and certify. About this um, next slide here too with our ambassador email um, and this link will take you to our ambassador page. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, concerns. Um, again, we'll keep you posted on those rebates as much as we can. Um, and I will send out a follow-up email for this webinar. It is recorded. Um, and feel free to reach out again if you have any questions or concerns. Um, we can stick around a little bit here too if you want to come off mute or write any questions in the chat. Thank you, everyone.